everyone. Um, my name is Natalia Levine, um, and I'm a data scientist at Swiss Re. Uh, it's a reinsurance company, if uh, you didn't hear about us. Um, today, we'll be talking about um, an early warning system, something uh, we worked on at the, at the company for um, the last two to three years. I worked with a large number of people, um, uh, and I can't really put all their names on this uh, slide, so I would just listed my core team of data scientists, uh, engineers, and business experts. Uh, so um, let me start the presentation. Let me go to the next slide. Right, so the agenda. So today we have 20 minutes, uh, 15 uh, first minutes of, of which I will be going over my slides and telling us what we've done. And after that, there's five minutes for Q&A. Um, so 15 minutes, not a long time. <laughs> uh, so I'll kind of briefly go through all of this. It's been a long time development. Um, so we'll talk about why we look at this problem. I'll talk about how we approached it. And our solution included two components, specifically ecosystem and tech enabled toolkit. So I will cover those um, and I will also talk about business value, how we use it. Right, so what's the challenge? Um, the, the main challenges uh, in here basically, actually there are two parts. One part is, um, you know, huge uh, data volumes, you know, information increases every year, it's doubling. And um, basically we are not catching up with that as, um, as humans. So something needs to be helping us to catch up with increasing volumes of information. Another one is trying to facilitate uh, group discussions, experts discussions within the company uh, so that we can make our decisions faster and we rely on a uh, solid kind of body of information and it's uh, well informed. So the thought about what exactly we can do, right? And we've had several trials and errors and I'm just showing there what, what kind of sort of worked for us uh, out of the options we tried. So, um, something that worked for our experts and something that worked technologically at this point. Um, so the two components, as I mentioned, one is ecosystem, another one is tech enabled toolkit. The main component of the ecosystem is um, our human capital, our expert groups, our business uh, experts, our uh, stakeholders. Um, they all kind of enter as groups in our um, uh, machine kind of aided uh, system design. And uh, there's also tech enabled toolkit, and this is something that helps to churn through all that volume, huge volume of information and provide something that um, is recommended for our humans, our experts to look at. Right, so what is the ecosystem in a bit more detail? So it's groups of people. So we differentiate people by uh, the expertise. So there's groups of medical officers, so medical doctors, there's groups of regulatory experts, there's groups of our, our legal experts and so on and so forth. So they, uh, they have their own groups um, and their um, technology enables them to uh, have discussions over certain topics, right? So. Uh, so that they consistently can express their views, they can assess what comes, you know, in, into the platform from either other people, other experts, or from the machine, um, and uh, uh, so that they can assess and recommend actions. So that's sort of our ecosystem. So what is Tech Enable Toolkit, the second component of uh, our early warning system? So it's, it's technology, right? So its main kind of task is to churn through um, large volumes of information, um, consist consistently score it, uh, visualize it, uh, and uh, help detecting uh, relevant events or so-called signals, All right? So the first component is data. You know, what, what exactly we are working with? Um, so we will be working, I'll, I'll be talking about here, about uh, unstructured data. So um, unstructured data could be you know, free text, could be videos, could be images. Uh, we, are, we will be covering here uh, uh, the free text, the news kind of stream. Um, so when you're selecting you know, 
data source. There's several very similar data providers for uh, news coverage. Um, we wanted to uh, that data source to satisfy uh, the following requirements. We want to come to cover different domains, medicine, law, regulations, finances. We want to have long enough historical coverage, covered multiple regions, uh, come from, you know, bring information from uh, several news sources, academia sources, regulatory sources. Uh, we want it to be in several languages because, um, you know, that the, the, the quality of their uh, signal might depend on which language you consider. consider. And also, also, which is importantly, wanted to be licensed for analytical models. Not sources are not all sources are. And um, an extra um, feature, if it can have some uh, useful metadata fields, uh, so that we can refine our um, refine our um, scoring methods. Right. So again, we went I think through three or four providers, um, and it's been a very long assessment exercise. So the uh, data provider, again, I'm not advertising, but the one that we, we are working with now is Dow Jones DNA. So again, has uh, covers news worldwide, has 28 languages, uh, covers specifically around 100 regions, um, uh, brings uh, news from 8,000 plus sources, uh, has a pretty long coverage. I think the first, the first uh, uh, News, uh, news article that that is in there comes from French Le Monde, uh, published in 1950. All right, so um, that's what we were working with, and yes, and the bonus about the metadata fields, it has plenty of them, so we, we are using them quite extensively. Right, so um, that's about the data. So now I mentioned signal. Right, what is a signal? Was well, very difficult for us to pinpoint, you know, something like some rigid definition. Because if we want to tell a machine to detect something, we need to code it in, right? And without knowing what experts mean by signal, it was difficult. So uh, we had multiple discussions, uh, and that led to this kind of four points that um, our experts agreed on that that's a characteristic of a signal. So we wanted something to be relevant to a topic, not just a noise or brief mention, but if it's if it's an article, it needs to be very relevant to what we are looking at, very focused. Um, we wanted uh, the article or event or signal to contain new information, something that we didn't know or something that just came up. We wanted uh, that um, event to be discussed in multiple outlets, multiple sources. We didn't want to pick up something that, you know, heavily discussed in one source, but actually no one else for some reason is discussing it. Um, and the last characteristic that is aided heavily by, you know, the assessment of these fourth properties aided heavily by our, our business experts um, is it basically needs to affect our company's business. The algorithms can do as, you know, certain amount in this direction, but uh, most of the job for the fourth criteria is done by humans. That's why it's all within this ecosystem of, uh, of you know, machine algorithms and people working together. All right, so more or less we know what signal is. Uh, so let's um, move into what is this tech-enabled toolkit. I'm a data scientist, so that's kind of close to my heart. I will have a bit more slides than for the ecosystem for this one. Um, so, what is it? As I mentioned, works with unstructured data. So each day we have approximately 100,000 articles, 100,000 articles coming um, into our system live, right? So our system, the way we set it up, each 15 minutes we get new updates, and on average it's 100,000 a day in English. Uh, these other languages, I'm not, I will not be mentioning those at this point, but that's what we are covering now. Uh, so the Articles can be, you know, free text, can be very long documents, can be hundreds of pages of documents, actually, if it's a, if it's a long company's report, right? So what we are trying to do, we are trying to uh, take something structured and structurize it as much as we could. So we try to sort these uh, articles into different buckets. So this, for example, it comes, it's a medical article, this is a financial article. Um, we also try to extract key elements out of articles, right? So uh, for whoever from you is data scientist, we try to extract named entities out of this, uh, company names, people names, 
we try to extract the drug names, right, disease names. Um, we also extract um, uh, other key kind of uh, concepts or keywords out of uh, an article. So that something that is several pages long after this uh, transformation becomes, you know, 20, 30 elements that now we can uh, work with, right? So when it became structurized, it's easier now to put scoring mechanism on, on top of it, All right? So um, for example, uh, this graph here shows uh, a 2D scoring, right? So there's a score on x-axis and there's a score on y-axis, say, you know, how novel and how viral signal was, so novel to say on the x-axis and how viral the message was on the y-axis. Um, and uh, we kind of, when we visualize, we want to put those in a way that it's easier for our, for our experts to process. So for example, the top right corner seems to be very important based on their kind of understanding what's behind the scores for humans. And that's where they will be going and examining those articles, all events first. And so that's how we went from an article to just a uh, data point uh, on a graph of the importance of something. Okay, so um, I have only three minutes, I think, to cover this. Uh, <laughs> um, so how do we do that? How do we do the scoring? Um, it's something I would like to discuss, but I'll just give you a flavor. So the, I will cover two ideas. One idea, when you see articles come in, you can see each article as a unit, right, uh, that you would like to assess. So you can take an article X and you can have a look at what was published before and what was published after this article. And after it could be, you know, two weeks, three weeks, one month, as much as you can tolerate to delay kind of your um, decision. So for us, it's, I think it's one, one month at this point. So when you've done that, uh, you have two scores, you know, how novel the article was with respect to the past and how persistent article's message uh, is in the future, right? So um, what, did, did the article make any impact on future messages in the future? So the kind of these two scores and um, the most important would be to have novel and persistent in the future. So that's um, one idea how you can score. Another idea behind scoring, um, if you look at concepts or keywords mentioned in an article as, um, as kind of as a unit, then um, uh, we can visualize these concepts for some time period T, say, you know, yesterday. That's, you know, graph of concepts we mentioned yesterday, these bubbles here. So this coronavirus vaccine, vaccine project, uh, coronavirus lockdown, public health, so on and so forth. So, and you draw connection between the bubbles if they, for example, occurred in the same article, right? So for yesterday, you'd get graph like this. For today, you'd get graph like, 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 like the one on the right. And you can sort of analyze dynamics with scores now. It's basically you get into graph here at this point. You can, you, you can look at uh, the dynamic uh, development of the graphs, what does it mean and how to score it. Now there are ways you can look at this graph. You can fix that time moment, for example, time moment T, and you can subdivide your graph into communities, the densely really kind of connected uh, regions. And they're highlighted here by different colors. And based on these communities, you can pull out what the story behind it, why this uh, bring that often together. Right, so this is the dashboard. Uh, again, uh, I think I'm running out of time, but if you want to discuss this further, we have a roundtable discussion, I think in half an hour or so, um, with me and my colleague, Annie Shu. So we can have a look, uh, we, can, we can have a look at you know, some of these aspects at that session. And I'm getting to my last slide, which is business value. So um, there's a lot of things, right? So, you know, how we use it and, uh, but the main idea here is to proactively uh, detect signals, right? Um, and smoothly facilitate that detected signal to, the, to our decision maker and stakeholder. So that's kind of what the system does, and we have processes around it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so far it's been uh, it's been very well received in the company. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I think we have four minutes for questions. <laughs>